All right, in this video, I'm gonna teach you as quickly as I can how to read notes on a page. So first, here's a piece of music. We have the title at the top, the composer in the upper right-hand corner, and the music below. All these dots with stems are notes and correspond to an exact note on the piano. For example, this note here is G, but it's not that G or that G, it's specifically this G. So every note is an exact note on the piano. And reading music is just reading these exact notes and playing them left to right. These notes are all lined up together, so you play them together. As you move forward, it's just like this. Okay, now that you understand that each of these notes corresponds to an exact note on the piano and playing notes is just playing it left to right, now let's get into actually how to read these notes. So notice these notes fall into two areas, a top area and a bottom area. Each of these areas is called a staff, the foundation upon which notes are drawn. Now notice both staffs have a different sign. The top sign is called treble clef and the bottom sign is called bass clef. What kind of notes does a bass player play? Well, he or she plays low notes, so the bass clef covers all the low notes on the piano. The treble clef covers all the high notes. Now notice, in each staff, how many lines are there? If you counted correctly, you'll see that there are five lines with four spaces in between those lines. Notice that the notes in the music either fall on a space or on a line. There are notes that fall outside of the staff as well. These are called ledger lines, and we're gonna get into that very soon. Now here we have a clean staff, and here the first line in the treble clef is an E. However, the first line in the bass clef is a G. The second space from the top is a C. But in the bass clef, that same note is an E. The lines and spaces are different in both clefs, so reading music becomes a memorization challenge. How music teachers have approached this challenge is by giving students mnemonics to memorize, like every good boy does fine. Memorizing that phrase helps you memorize that the five lines of treble clef are E, G, B, D, F. And the spaces are face, F-A-C-E. The bass clef also has its own mnemonics to help you memorize the lines and spaces there as well. The problem with this method is if you want to play the last line of the treble clef, you have to think, every good boy does fine. Oh, it's an F. That's slow and painful because you have to go through the whole acronym to get to that F. It also teaches you to memorize that that line is an F, but it doesn't teach you which F. One thing you can get from looking at this picture is noticing a pattern. Notice as you go from line to space to line to space, you're moving up the alphabet. You're moving consecutive letters. So the first line there is E, right, every. And then you go to the space, which is F, you know, the F in face. Then the next line is G, then the space is A, and you go up to B, and the next space is C, right? And then line, space, line, you're at F. And that's the pattern of going from line to space. You're moving up letters. Now another important concept is what if we wanted to keep going higher? Well, we have the final line there at F. We know that you have to go line, space, line, space, so the next thing has to be a space. So we draw the G at the top of the line. It doesn't have a line running through it, so it's technically a space. And then we have the G there. Now what happens now that we've ran out of lines, because after a space is a line, so what you do is you start drawing your own lines, and these are called ledger lines. So the next note is going to be an A, we know right after G is A, and it's going to look like this. So now we have our A, which is on a line, and now we need a space, so we draw the line, and we draw the note right above it, so it's a space. And then we need a line again, so we draw two ledger lines, and we have a C. And you can just continue this pattern, and that's how ledger lines work. So you're just drawing in the lines. And it also works as you go below a staff, for example, in the bass clef like here. So with this knowledge now of lines and spaces, we can replace every good boy does fine with what I call the landmark system. Instead of memorizing 18 lines and spaces in a specific order, memorize just a few landmarks evenly spaced across the keyboard. So our first landmark in the music is middle C right here. So middle C is the C in the middle of your piano. It's the fourth C from the bottom of an 88 key keyboard and the third C from the bottom on smaller sized keyboards. Now our next landmark is treble G. See it's going to be the second line from the bottom in the treble clef. 
So the second line from the bottom is treble G. Now see how we can connect the two landmarks. So you have middle C, then after above that you have D, right line to space, then you have the next line E, and then you have space F, and then look, you're at G. C, D, E, F, G. Treble G is the G above middle C. Now our next landmark is in the bass clef. This is gonna be bass F, right? You have an F in the bass, so that's gonna be here. And that is the F below middle C. Notice what happens when we move up from base F. So we have F on a line, then space is G, line A, space B, and then line, ledger line right there, middle C. Middle C is the first ledger line above bass clef and the first ledger line below treble clef. So a lot of people when talking about landmarks write out three landmarks like this. Middle C looks the same in bass clef and treble clef, so it's just right there in the middle. Notice also that G and F are equally four notes away from middle C. So you have middle C here, you have treble G here, and you have bass F there. Between C and G you have three letters, D, E, F, and between F and C you also have three letters. And visually you can see a sort of relationship. Treble G is the second line from the bottom of treble, and bass F is the second line from the top of bass clef. Now that we've memorized these landmarks, figuring out the notes around them is easy. If this is G, what is this note? Well, it's right above G, right? So right above G is A. And this note here, what would that be? Well, it's right above middle C, so it's D. And this note here, it's below F, so it's E. All right, so now that we have these three core landmarks, let's expand outward to the next landmarks. So our next two landmarks are treble C and bass C. Notice again you're expanding equally outward. So you have your treble G and your bass F. Now you go three letters out and you have your two Cs. So you have your bass C and your treble C. And notice that they look visually very similar too. So again with the treble from the bottom up, it's the third space. And in the bass clef from the top bottom, it's the third space. And again, we can just figure out notes around it. So what is this note? Well, it's above C, right? So it's a D. What is this note? It's below C, so it's a B. And if you wanted to go even lower, what's this note? Well, it's just two notes below C, so it's an A. A, B, C, right? C, B, A. All right, now let's expand out again to our next two landmarks. And what we have is high G and low F. And visually, they look very similar too. High G is touching the top of the clef in treble clef, and low F is touching the bottom of the bass clef, right? It's the space that's touching the outsides. And say we look at high G here, right? Above high G is our first ledger line. That's an A. Then we have the space, B. Then we have two ledger lines, C. And that's our final landmark. So we have high C which is two ledger lines out. Can you guess what low C is gonna look like? Well, it's always gonna be like a mirror, right? It's always gonna be an inverse. So two lines out is high C, two lines out is low C. So two lines below the bass clef. So there we have it, we have our nine landmarks. In treble clef, the landmarks are just C's and G's, and in bass clef, the landmarks are all C's and F's. Visually, it's easy to remember. On the outsides, you have high C, and low C, which are two ledger lines out, and then you have high G and low F, which are touching the staves on the outside, right, just on the space, and then within the clefs, it's inverse. So you have your treble C, which is three lines from the bottom of treble, and you have your bass C, which is three lines from the top of bass, and then from there, you have your treble G, which is two lines from the bottom, and you have your bass F, which is two lines from the top, and then right in the middle, you have your middle C, which looks very similar in the treble and the bass clef. And because now you know the line and space relationships, you can figure out the notes around these landmarks very easily. And if you memorize these nine landmarks, you'll have access to all these notes. If you're interested in becoming a fast note reader, I've actually already created a note reading boot camp where I go in depth on this method and drill you through exercise after exercise until you can read notes really fast. Feel free to check that out in the description below. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in another video.